Welcome, Moon Breakers. This is the final match of the Absolute Magnitude 12 tournament. This is Pax versus Scytheman. This is a best of three. And we see Scytheman here with Gardner. And Pax is playing Severi. Scytheman is going first. And he's dropping down a Thornvine in cover. And he's also putting, uh, I think, Nuisance in the end next to the Cinder Pile. And what's really interesting about this is, if you watch the very first match that we covered of this tournament, um, Scytheman had the exact same opening on this map before. And on the other side here, we see Severi. And we see a dead eye, I believe. Yep, there she is. Using release also and attacking Gardener here. I'm not sure if I like that. The thing is, when you play Severi, Severi is really good at killing crews, but not so good at killing a captain, relatively speaking, because of her dueling ability, which doesn't work against captains. So usually I would say it's better to focus damage on crew, especially early on. Against Gardner, if you can hit the Thorn Vines, that's also great. Like, whenever you can prevent them from uh, growing, that is really useful. Otherwise, uh, yeah. I don't know. I think it's better to attack units here and not the captain. Let me see. The opponent's dead eye, or Sideman's dead eye, and. Um, uh, I forgot the name. A nuisance. <laughs> Attacking dead eye here. And yeah, nuisance hit, which means that eye is now electrified, and that's really painful. You can also see that Pax is not able here to get into range yet, and that really hurts. Because Severi needs to get into range. And at four leadership, I mean, I don't know what Pax has in his list, uh, but I think potentially there could have been a crankbait here. Um, for example, to pull Nuisance in, uh, or in range of Severi, and then attack that. I think that would have been a good move. Uh, instead, he goes for the Thornvine here. The thing is, this Thornvine was really far away. And if you don't kill crews, like, killing a Thornvine doesn't give you victory points. It doesn't reduce the opponent's Cinder income. So, while Thornvines are really annoying, I'm not sure if that is the right choice here to go after a Thornvine. The problem is also that Dead Eye has now a Cinder infusion on her. She's infused, right? From Fixer. So the 5 health Dead Eye there in the back is a really juicy target by now. And you can see Scytheman here is lining up his shots to get there. Because if he can kill that Dead Eye, then Severi is gonna have a lot less Cinder available. Which, generally speaking, is what you need to do. You can't let Severi run around the field. Okay. Now we see Severi here shielding Gardner. This makes sense because Gardner is really standing in the middle there and also adds lead to finish off the dead eye. And at this point, Pack's in a really tricky spot because there just isn't enough Cinder generation anymore on the map. That means in the next turn, Severi isn't great and also if you look at the pathfinding here there isn't too much room really to go anywhere and there's also a very limited amount of cinder i mean there's three cinder that means technically you can duel but that's about it we see bulwark coming down now bulwark is a really strong unit uh cinder infusion on the bulwark and then fixer is moving in for the kill on Etzli. This is pretty risky actually, moving Fixer back like this, because the accuracy is only 82%. And because of the Electrified, I think Fixer is dead anyway. And then Pax is going here for the Captain. As I said earlier, I think it would have been better to go for crew actually you can see Severi can move between the Thornvine and Gardner here so she could have launched into Dead Eye for example and then uh, attack her afterwards so that Dead Eye could sit at one health right now it all means nothing and, everything. 
and now we see a beetle coming down. Beetle with the thorn vines is absolute pain. Right now Scytheman I think is in a really good spot. Like he has a lot of well cheap units but good units and beetle makes them really a lot better. Also two thorn vines on the map. Um, they are reasonable units and yeah nuisance um, going here for the electrify on Severi, which I think is useful. He can't really target the Boulevard right now. I think otherwise he would do it. Um, so slowing down the Severi and dealing a lot of damage to her, at least if Severi decides to use abilities, is usually a good idea. I also really like the Thorn Vines. Like these Thorn Vines plus Gardner really block Severi in. So there isn't much Severi can do at this point. Now, if you look at the line of sight here, Bulwark probably can't attack Beetle here. I don't know. Um, if Bulwark could, then I think it would be reasonable. Especially with the drop that we see here in a second, which is Taria. Um, because then Bulwark could just kill the Beetle here, right? But instead, we see the focus here on Gardener. Taria missed. So Pax is using a lunge here and then attacking with Bulwark. I don't really like it. I think it would have been better if Severi had attacked the Thornvine that has two health right now and then would, la would have launched into both uh, of the other Thornvines. So they are both at two health. Taria could have then killed the greater Thornvine on the left and Bulwark could have shot at Nuisance with a relatively high chance, maybe even 100%. Uh, and would have left Nuisance at one health. I think that would have been better because then the Thornvines would be gone and without the thorn vines beetle would have lost a lot of value and it would have also meant that nuisance has to run for his life because without that like with going after gardner gardner has fertilized soil you just saw it he just ran away and there's no movement here for severi like there's no chuck there's no uh, crankbait right now there's no quetzali that severi just can't get anywhere and that means there's just so much um so little maneuverability here for Pax and so much damage now for Scythemen that, yeah, I really feel like Pax is struggling here a lot. See another shield on Beetle. Uh, you really don't want to lose Beetle here. Quite often, when people can, they will always kill Amplifier. That unit is just like it provides so much value especially in a list like this especially with the thorn vines it's also really good in rapid fire lists like if you have maximus plus taria in your list a lot of ranged units then i would say beetle is also really good but with the thorn vines it's absolutely great and yeah you can see at this point Severi is sitting at two health and is electrified and Gardner is sitting at 14 health. So, I mean, there really isn't much you can do. Even if you kill the Chuck, right, then you still have the problem. There's no unit, I think, that can deal 14 damage. Even Rickety only has eight. So, I guess in Theory, a rickety plus a very plus Taria's rapid fire could kill Gardner, but Taria doesn't get in range here. Um, so there really isn't much packs can do at this point. Is the Aria here with the rapid fire? Shooting with more than Gardner. Gardner is going down to six, now at four. But yeah, we. Still missing 4 damage here, so I don't think there's any way to kill Gardner. And that is it. GG's. The first game into Scytheman. And here we are in the second game. So in this game, Pax switched his captain to Zax and also has a different list. Players were allowed to do that. They could switch their list whenever they wanted to uh, in this tournament. But Scytheman is still using the same list and the same captain. And he's going first here with Gardner. And I'm actually going to skip here a little bit forward because the first turn took very, very long. 
But you can see now he deployed the thorn vine in cover. I would say for Gardner this is expected. And we also see the deployment here. He was thinking a nuisance or a data. You could see how he switches the units around. Now, nuisance hit chance here is obviously not great, but if you hit, then the reward is really great because Sax would take a lot of damage. Uh, while Dead Eye is basically the safer option. But yeah, nuisance missed, which is a little bit unfortunate. And then we see Pax going forward with Zax using Gravity Disc here. And he actually does have a line of sight here to nuisance. Um, Though it's, I think it's right at the edge. If he was a little bit more to the left, then uh, he probably wouldn't have line of sight here. Yeah. You can see it. And he's also hitting nuisance. Um, I like the focus here on nuisance. And we also see a snailing to put nuisance in place. Snailing is a really great unit, but I'm not sure if snailing is good that early on. Usually I feel like snailing is great later on as a cheap response when your opponent plays something that you can't deal with right now. Like maybe a hit and run or um, a crash or tipu or something like that. I feel like that's when snailing is really good. This early in the game, especially in the open like this, it just gets focused down. You can see it here. He's electrified. That I shot him. Newson shot him. Um, it's also electrified right now. So that snailing is really suffering already. And there's a second thorn vine also placed nicely in cover. Now, technically, Zax could go to the left or deploy something to the left and shoot that thorn vine, but it's always a tough choice. Snelling is shooting and missing. And what Pax is doing now, I think the idea behind it is really good. The execution isn't great. So, what we'll see here in a second is actually, well, spoiler, it's gonna be a jailbreak. And I do like that. However, he didn't attack with Zax first. I think he should have attacked Nuisance with Zax first, get the shot in, deal the damage. And then the Vortex here, I really like the idea. Sadly, that I wasn't uh, in the Vortex. Maybe if the Vortex would have been a little bit further to the north, maybe that I could have been moved into Jailbreak. I'm not sure. That's always tricky to say. And uh, the mine here is also okay, I feel like, because this mine makes it so that the thorn vines have something to attack. However, Pax forgot to attack with Jailbreak. That is actually quite a costly mistake. Because if Jailbreak and Zax both had attacked Nuisance, Nuisance would sit at 2 health. And then Nuisance would probably die soon. I mean, Gardener would heal it at the end of turn, but it would be a low health. Uh, nuisance. But you can see a really nice move here also by Scytheman. He's moving Jailbreak away with Motivator. The Nuisance goes forward, snipes the snailing. And generally speaking, I do like this here. Um, I think Scytheman actually made a mistake here. Um, you can see it's moving next to Jailbreak and now he's putting a plant there to block Jailbreak, but I think he completely forgot that Jailbreak is actually airborne and doesn't care about being blocked. And then yeah, you see the um, deck attack from the Thorn Vines onto the mine, so that absorbed one attack, which I think is really good. Uh, the second Thorn Vine hit Jailbreak, I think the hit chance there wasn't very high shooting through Gardner, so that's a little bit unlucky. And this time Jailbreak is attacking a Thorn Vine. The thing is now there's so many Thorn Vines, it really starts hurting. And the problem here is again, all these units right now are at high health and you can't really kill them. And we see Skrills here. I think Skrills is a great unit, really, really strong. The problem is playing Skrills right now is not great because Scytheman's list only has cheap units. Like if you take a unit over like a Hidden Run that has four damage or a Bulwark, or maybe even a Pyro or a Tonia, at least if you have a high IO, uh, AoE potential. Then overtaking one of those units is really, really good. But I think overtaking the Motivator here just to block Gardner in is not that valuable. The other thing 
I don't like that much from Pax gameplay is that you see the damage is very often split up across the captain and the unit and that makes it really hard for him to kill anything. Like you can see the nuisance is now sitting at 4 health but nuisance could be dead by now. Gardner is sitting at 26 but he isn't really threatened so the damage on him doesn't really matter and because none of those units dies Scytheman is just running away with this game and if you look at Scytheman's list here he has a lot of really really cheap drops Ignore the pain. it's like like he, well actually he has a few five and six drops uh, but he has also I think in total he has five drops that are three or cheaper and that's a lot and it just allows him to really pump out a lot of units that plus the thorn vines is a huge threat and the rest of his list is more along like to support there, right? Like the rest of the list has like Amplifier Beetle and there's um, Dr. Feelbad in there. And they are just there that all these small attacks basically add up into something big. Five out of six crew on the field. And now Zax is being blocked in. And Pax again has the problem here. So few units on the board. He can't, doesn't really have a lot of Cinder. Now Zax can always free himself. But the problem here really is killing something. I don't know what Pax has in his list. One thing to note here is that there are two cinder piles in the middle of the map right now. And that could potentially be devastating if there is any way to kill those cinder piles. But I think it would be a really, really tough here also to do that. Like, Scurials can't really take over Deadeye, for example, to punch one of the Cinder Piles. If that was possible somehow, then Zax plus Deadeye could punch one of the Cinder Piles and you exploded with your deployment crew. But even then, I feel like, uh, yeah, technically it's possible to do something nice with the Cinder Piles, but I think Pax just doesn't have the Cinder nor the units to really utilize it at this point. And let me see Chuck here, killing Nuisance. Interestingly enough, while I feel like that uh, Scytheman's board state overall is better, he's not ahead in victory points. We see another mine here. Generally speaking, mines are great to block, but there is a motivator on the map, and that means this mine will be fired back. Like, whenever there is displacement on the map, you basically eat your own mines. And I already said it in another video, I think. Um... These days, there's so much displacement in the game, mines just um, are a huge liability, honestly. And they really don't feel that great anymore to me. And yeah, the move with the mine is really nice. And there's Dr. Feelbad. And, I mean, it's five cinder. It's really expensive to use Dr. Feelbad, but the thing is, the more attacks you have, the better he is. And yeah, you can see it here. Sabria punching essentially for 4 damage. Only 3 because um, Chuck obviously has armor. But the multiplied damage, it hurts so much. And there's also the mine there. So this mine essentially right now deals 5 damage. 3 base damage plus 2 from Dr. Feelbad. It's only 4 on Chuck, but that still kills Chuck, so... Yeah, the mine really hurts you. Skrills is being attacked by one of the thorn vines. Um, yeah, Skrills is kind of out of position right now anyway, so he can't really do a lot. Or I guess they. They can't really do a lot. And now Pax is in a really difficult spot. You can see there's so many units here. And he has a decent amount of cinder at least because the mine went off at the start of his turn. So he got the cinder from Chuck that really, really helps him. Scurials potentially can take over a unit, but the problem really here is what do you take over and how does it help you? And I do like his idea here. Like again, the unit that he deploys, similar to the jailbreak play in the beginning, I think it's not bad. I just think it... Um, Could have been a bit better, basically. You see the Balam here, the double stun. I think that is really nice. But I think if Zax had moved forward, he probably could have gravity disc, the Ed Sleet, the Motivator, and the Deadeye in one block. And if he does that, 
then he can stun them all. Because he still had two in the left right now, he only has one in the left because he just deployed a mine. But he could have used the gravity disc and Balam. And that would have been really tough, I think. That being said, there would have still been Dr. Feelbad. Those units still generate Cinder. And uh, Scythemen can deploy, right? So even when doing that, it would still be really tough. Plus they are the thorn vines, of course. So, uh, yeah, he is in a really, really difficult position at that point. But I do like the Balam play, and I think maybe it could have really done a lot here. He's also ahead in victory points. It's only his captain, really, that's low right now. There's Hidden Run, Punching Sacks. And there's that sleep, and that is it. 2 0 for Scythemen. GG. And with that, Scythemen won the tournament. Pax came in second. Both players here played really well. And I hope you guys enjoyed the match. Thank you so much for watching, and have a moon-tastic day. Bye.